Good morning. Um, it's time for coffee and evaluating the needs of the garden. But I wanted to show you this space here. We are at the point of the year where the garden is completely wild. This is our new garden space. There used to be a pathway there, a pathway there, and a pathway there. Thankfully, I did plant the tomatoes along the outside so I can still get to them to tie them up. But right down the center was actually a space I was um, a little concerned with. The uh, winter squash was a little bit puny to start. I fertilized a few times and I'm at the point where I can't tell where one plant begins and one plant stops. There's possibly some management I could do within there, but I think I'd do more damage trying to walk through all of those vines. So we're at this point where we're just going to let it go wild, see what we have at the end of the season. Loving this way of trellising. Um, I think I'll try to find a way to implement something like this in all spaces. Basically, it's a cattle panel made out of materials I had on hand. Um, and we're at the top of the trellis for all of the Amish paste tomatoes, so we'll see how that goes from there. I can't really go any higher than that, so um, that is what it is. We've got some almost ready to harvest Amish paste tomatoes. I think they're getting ready to come on strong, so we're heading into canning season. And I always have to show these. I just think they're so beautiful. I might just always grow these because they look like having a little jewel in the garden. Um, they are, these are black strawberries from Baker Creek. And actually my last, uh, I think my last garden tour, one of my last videos, I showed, I, I took a leaf off right here and these were completely green. And now from getting the sun on them, they've started to purple and getting the anthocyanin might be pronouncing that wrong but that the purple antioxidant that's in like blueberries and things um, and something I have decided I will always do is plant these sunflowers um, it was a kind of like a mix from I think like high mowing organics it's one of the brands that our local feed store carries um, there will always be these sunflowers in my garden. The amount of birds that have been on them this year, the amount of pictures I've taken and sent my family because they're so pretty. Um, I love these smaller heads because they, they stand up on their own. There's a couple I have supported, but they stand up on their own and I absolutely love them. I did not do a great job of keeping my romas tied up this year but we're starting to get some color. So again, I think within a week or so, uh, we're gonna be in the thick of canning and freezing tomatoes. That's one of those things, it's so exciting. Is, is there something there? Ma'am, don't you break, oh, what? Oh, you weren't doing anything? You were just gonna lay there like the best dog? She is such a goober. Uh, the basil tower is actually kind of picking up some speed. Um, there's more growing there than I thought we had originally. Um, I've decided to, I really like the lemon, lemon basil for tea. I'm not as much of a fan of the cinnamon basil um, for tea, so I'm going to figure out something else to do with this. And um, I planted beets in here this is my effort to eat to figure out a way to eat some of the vegetables that I don't like as much so I brought some beets out here planted in some of the empty cells they have germinated so if you have any recipes for people that don't like beets to figure out a way to like beets leave that in the comments I was out here just kind of puttering last night till after dark um, kind of evaluating some things in the garden. Um, zucchini has done amazing this year. Three zucchini plants has kept us in more zucchini than we can get through. Um, the cucumbers are starting to come on pretty strong. I'm actually planning on making some refrigerator pickles today. Um, this bed of broccoli, 
I've never had a ton of success with brassicas. Um, I'm letting it go partially for the seeds, but also the leaves are all healthy. Like they're not being destroyed by caterpillars. So I'm kind of leaving them because one, I kind of, I like that philosophy of always having something growing in your garden. Um, that, that actually the plants feed the soil. I have more learning to do on the topic, but I'm embracing that more and more. I'm trying to keep things growing at all times, even if I'm like, I'm not sure what I want to plant there, but let's get something growing. Worst case scenario, I change my mind and I snip, snip off what's growing there. But usually by the time it's time to transition from cool weather to the warm weather things, the broccoli has just been destroyed and I want to get it out just because I don't want to just be continuing to feed the caterpillars and kind of increase my population of the things I don't want. But like that, provided there's some holes, I'm not looking for perfection here. That's doing really well. Uh, we talked about doing our garlic in here um, for the fall. I don't know. I might go through cut that out and just plant the garlic in it. I was, I was going to cut this out and plant buckwheat um, for the in-between, like end of broccoli and the beginning of cabbage, or I can't say the right vegetable this morning, um, garlic, but I'm thinking about just leaving them in. I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave them in or cut them out and plant buckwheat till it's time to do garlic? Um, this sweet potato bed is looking really good. Hoping to have better luck with sweet potatoes this year. Our harvest was really good last year, but we had voles that had burrowed in and eaten a lot, like taken bites out of a lot of, of course, the nicest ones. So I've got two of those solar stakes in that bed that beep, trying to keep the critters out. Um, the spinner over here is also in one of our beds of sweet potatoes. Th that was sweet potatoes last year. That one was fine. Um, the spinner is supposed to kind of do the same thing. Like it, when it spins, it vibrates down into the soil, deters the moles or moles and voles and tunneling creatures. So hoping, hoping that works. Uh, our potatoes have been harvested from the original part of the garden. We still have some to harvest back there. Um, all the spaces that are empty are planted with something I remember most of them. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing you those till they actually start to germinate. Um, just trying to get something growing everywhere. Again, even if it's not like something I'm like, I know I'm going to harvest that. Having something growing in the soil to keep it covered, to keep roots in it, to keep plants photosynthesizing um, with roots in the soil is the goal. Look at this beautiful tomato. These are German pinks over here. Some of these are just beautiful. We've had one ripe so far, but that looks like beauty right there. This bed right here, look at the size of that onion. Um, I've harvested a couple from this bed. They've finished out. One of them was a pound. The other one was, I don't know, 12 or 13 ounces. So these are absolutely gorgeous. I didn't plant them all in the same way. I kind of crowded others um, together in like clumps of three. Those are smaller, but honestly, I don't know that I need all of my onions to be almost a pound because um, all of my recipes don't require that much onion at one time. So having one that's just the size I need, like more tennis ball opposed to softball, is fine. This is the cherry tomato that will always grow in this space, I'm fairly certain, whether you want it to or not. I never plant it anymore. We planted it one year and I haven't had to plant it since because it just volunteers absolutely everywhere. Um, the flavor is really good. There's a ton of tomatoes. The vines are ridiculous. And actually, um, I was watching one of Roots and Refuge's videos and they uh, just said something about a particular kind of tomato that kind of like grows wild somewhere. I forget, 
down south somewhere and I'm like oh that might be it I actually need to go find that video and see because the way she described that particular plant sounded like this one look at these buckwheat flowers I absolutely love these when I started using the buckwheat in the garden for cover crop I also started using these in flower arrangements periodically if I deem somebody in my life needs flowers they get wildflowers from whatever's growing in the yard and buckwheat makes a beautiful little wildflower arrangement the cave beans are absolutely taking off I look back on a video I published like July 5th and these were just like you know just germinated two little leaves and now the if you follow the vines up this one is right here that's a little bit over my head and if we come over here this one right here is up over my head so that's about a six foot vine at this point I'm actually really excited to see what this looks like by the end of the season um, I have been doing winter squash here for the past few years this year we're doing the cave beans I got them in a little later than I planned but such is life excited to see what this is going to look like look at that um, so something I've been struggling with a little bit is sometimes this point in the season I feel a little bit out of sorts in terms of my garden maybe in terms of life in general but also in terms of my garden um, that kind of all the things you're really excited to get in the ground typically are growing um, you've had some successes you've had some failures it's really really hot um, and so you kind of feel like you're maybe in a little bit of a lull you're in between lots of tomatoes and um, you know the first harvest of getting lettuce or something like that that you're so excited about in the beginning of the spring um, but just keep planting it's okay it's okay to feel out of sorts it's okay to not be sure what to do in the garden like I've planted some things in here um, I haven't kept up with the watering as much as I feel like I should and kind of last night I was reflecting like why um, it's hard to get a hose through here like I have planted in absolutely every single space that I can within this fence and it gets to the point where it's hard to walk through it's impossible to drag a hose and it's even a little bit of a challenge to carry watering cans through so that's something for me to put in the back of my mind for next year like when I want to plant things um, for later germination for partway through the summer for going into the fall where do I want those so I can water them um, so be kind to yourself it's okay it's easy to get down on yourself because you don't feel like you're doing something right or you're not doing enough or whatever life advice from the garden uh, all right thank you for joining me for this hodgepodge walk through the garden somewhat of a garden tour almost at the end of July my daughter's calling for me which is why the dogs are yelling at me to go up and carry her downstairs not sure how much longer I'll be able to do that so it's time to go inside thank you so much for joining me